Hey guys, it's PC First, and I'm back for another episode of A Dancer Reviews, where a dancer, me, is going to review either a TV show or a music video or whatever that has something to do with pole dancing. And we're going to talk about it from more than just like a story perspective. We're going to talk about how we're seeing pole in there. Today we're doing Jocelyn's Cabaret, which is in Las Vegas. So let's talk about it. This episode starts picking up from the fight where basically the whole house jumped Gaia, which I don't like. And Jocelyn liked it because she felt like all the girls got together and kicked her out collectively, which is what I felt they should have done with Amber. But that's apparently they're keeping her around. So then Lexi and Chanel are outside with Gaia and Chanel is, you know, talking to her. She gets fed up. She walks off. Lexi is standing there kind of trying to defend Jocelyn. Gaia took her frustration out on her. She said she used to wrestle. Homegirl hit this stance. She was like, and she just took Lexi down. <laughs> but then after that, the house just kind of started attacking her again. It was like a mob. And they, they jumped her again. And they took her suitcase and they threw it in the fountain. And then not only did they throw it in the fountain, then they opened it up and emptied the stuff into the fountain. They threw her books in the fountain. Books are expensive and they're hard to replace. And then she had a bunch of different religious books in there. In the end, the whole thing just really left a bad taste in my mouth because is this show about dancing or is it about fighting? If it wasn't for the promise of dancing next week, I, I was about to abandon this series like I can't do it again with the lack of dancing like yes I'm giving you guys inspired episodes of, with tips and tricks but like can we get to some dancing can we get to seeing you build the cabaret yeah, like the next morning Chanel and Lexi are sitting down talking about how the girls are you know not respecting them and Lexi feels some type of way that Chanel didn't back her up but you haven't been backing up Chanel if anything you kind of supposed to be her number two. Like, she's Jocelyn's number two and you're her number two. Like, and she's always saying, oh, we're the winners. We're the winners trying to be nice. And it's like, Lexi, you going to get what you give. That's all I'm going to say. So then in another part of the house, you got some more of the girls talking. They basically feel like I like, asked for it. And they also think that she's crazy. And it's like, so do you think it's okay to jump a mentally challenged person if y'all really think that she has mental issues like that's not okay in another part of the house you got some more of the girls talking and then amber comes and joins the conversation and she's all oh guy is nice you guys should give her another chance because in her confessional she says she's afraid of the impression that she's left on the ladies like what do you mean the impression that you left and then she's mad at lollipop though for throwing her under the bus and Lollipop stands up to her and she's like, um, I think what you did was whack. Maybe you think what I did was whack, but then we both whack. So what's up? Then Jocelyn has me cracking up because I remember back in the day when Mimi was Molly the maid. But then she comes in this confessional with the scarf around her head looking like Molly the maid. So I'm like, girl. But then it's cut with her having a conversation with Ballistic, which she had on this fire, fire, fire. Gucci bucket hat and that hat was so cute. She was like a little sexy Gilligan. And I was like, where can I get this hat? It was it was a moment. It was very cute. But she just filled ballistic in. And she told well, she told Ballistic that Chanel told the girls to have an eight count ready, but that she didn't have that uh as an assignment for them. Another thing annoying me, you keep telling Chanel that she needs to fill in for you in her in your place. But then when she does stuff, you don't back her up. It's like you're not backing up people, but then you're like Jocelyn is the biggest flip-flop on this show. Every time she makes a decision, she goes back and contradicts herself and does something opposite. She doesn't stand by anything that she says. So how are you supposed to be their leader and nobody can follow you because you're all over the damn place? But anyway, so all the girls go to the new club and she starts off with Chanel and um, Lexi Blow. And she's talking to them about what happened. She's asking Lexi Blow, you know, how does she feel getting slammed? And then she starts fussing at Chanel about not having Lexi Blow's back when the girls asked her about this stupid thing about laughing at them for having to sleep outside. And Jocelyn's like, you should have had her back and said, and basically lied. And Chanel's like, well, why should I lie? That again, it was funny and people got to have thick skin. If anything, Chanel should have spoke up and said, yeah, she said it and what? So then all the girls come in and I just want to take your attention to point out a few shoes. So... First are these shoes right here, which are the sparkly shoes in any urban club. You're going to see at least 
one of these. One of these <laughs> on somebody's feet on any given night. Because those are just like all over the place. And if you've seen my thigh high uh, boot tutorial, I just put in, I'll leave a link down below. But I have those boots in thigh highs and they're the most amazing shoes but they're really hard to find right now. But that's besides the point. Oh, and the other shoes. So Lexi Blow has on what I like to call stripper comfort heels. Now, I'm going to leave a link as to where you can buy these shoes. They are not stripper shoes, but they are clear lucite heels with a wedge. And they are super comfort comfortable. And I feel like we should just normalize comfortable stripper shoes. Because like if you're not on the stage and you just maybe walking around, why can't you put on a, a cute pair of wedges? Like, they're still heels, you know? But... I digress. So Jocelyn tells the girls, you know, Chanel told y'all y'all had to do an eight count, but that's not what I'm telling y'all you gotta do. Y'all have to clean this uh this club up. And the girls are like, I didn't sign up for that. The one with the most mouth, Amber, they need to cut a check, hire some cleaners. I'm not here for this. Okay. I actually think this is a good exercise for the girls. Hear me out, because I don't like cleaning either. But it's a team building exercise. If you guys have to work together, right? Them cleaning the space makes the makes the the place more personal to you. Like I've actually cleaned these chairs, these walls. Like I have a, a hand in this place. I have a vested interest in it. And the fact that they have to work together, it, it they can have fun doing something they don't necessarily want to do, but they're doing it as a group. Like it's a it's a good group exercise and it shows that they can work together and of course they're doing it playing having fun which is fine and they're allowed to drink but who has a lot of something to say amber and she's mad because chanel and lexi blow aren't cleaning they're supervising but that's what jocelyn asked them to do and she's throwing a fit and basically cursing them out chanel and lexi blow step to the side they talk like man they're not respecting us what are we gonna do let's pull her to the side they ask to pour her to the side and she's like give me a minute and they're just standing there stuck like that that's not how it works but they get her to sit down she starts talking on and on and on about nothing how they're not helping I guess until Jocelyn comes back and says this is what I told them to do and then she says she wasn't aware of that even though Jocelyn said in front of them all that that's what they needed to do so all that cleaning really inspired me because it is very important to clean your pole. So today we're going to talk about how and why you need to clean your dancer pole. It basically boils down to two things, which are health and safety. So what are you cleaning off the pole? Well, let's go in order from least gross to most gross. So least gross would be gripping aids. So anything that you put on your hands or your body to keep you from sliding off the pole. That's just going to leave a residue on your pole. Next would be antiperspirant and lotion. They're going to make the pole very slippery, so that's definitely a safety hazard. Third would be the most gross, and that would be dead skin, bacteria, sweat. So as you can imagine, exposing yourself to that could leave you open to getting all types of like bacterial infections, maybe staph, something like that. Before we talk about how to clean your pole, let's talk about some things you should absolutely never, ever, ever use to clean your pole. First thing would be anything super abrasive like scouring pads. No, no, no. Second thing you don't want to use, you don't want to use household detergents like furniture polish and you don't want to use bleach. None of those things are going to work and they could actually damage your pole. Most people are familiar with poles like this one which is a metal pole, but there are actually other types of poles like silicone poles and powder coated poles and both of those need to be cleaned in a very different way. A silicone pole might require you to take a trip somewhere kind of spicy <laughs> because you can use adult toy cleaner for silicone products to clean your silicone pole. So what you'll do is you'll take your adult toy cleaner, you'll spray your microfiber cloth down, and then you'll use that to wipe down your pole. Powder coated poles are different from silicone poles and they're also different from metal poles, so they have to be cleaned differently. For the powder coated poles, what you want to do is you want to take a very, very mild cleaning detergent, mix that with water, and once again, you want to grab your microfiber cloth, you want to put the solution on here, and then from there, you want to wipe down your pole. Make sure your rag isn't dripping wet. 
The next pole we're going to talk about is a brass pole. And for the brass pole, that too needs to be cleaned differently from your silicone pole, from your powder coated pole, and from the other metal poles that we'll talk about in a second. But for the brass pole, you need a brass cleaner. It can be very messy, and so in addition to your microfiber cloth, you're going to also want some gloves. Lastly, let's talk about the most familiar poles, which are the chrome, the titanium gold, and the stainless steel. For all of those, very simply, you need a solution of alcohol and water. Most people mix alcohol that's maybe 90 and up percent with water and about a 50-50 split. So to clean your pole, no matter what kind you have, one thing I'm going to stress that you need to get is this microfiber cloth. The reason that you need a microfiber cloth is because it doesn't leave any lint behind, which is very, very important. No residue. What you're going to do for each of these poles is spray your rag down, not spray the pole. Once you have your rag sprayed where it's not dripping wet, then you're going to use that to clean your pole. And put a little bit of effort into it if you have some really stuck on spots. And for any of your metal poles, you can uh, use a concentrated amount of alcohol for really, really stuck, uh, nasty bits. How often should you clean your pole? Well, if you're in a class, before you start your class, you should clean it. And once you're done, for the next person, you should clean your pole. If you work in a club, you should clean your pole before your set and before each set. <laughs> and if you're in a rotation, each time you hit a new pole, you might want to wipe it down. If you're in a competition, between each person, they're going to wipe it down. If you're at home, you should still clean your pole often. I mean, it's your germs, but they're still germs, so don't be nasty. I mean, you've got a little more leeway, but I would still say at least each day you should wipe down your pole. I mean, depending on how quickly you get it dirty, maybe, and how often you train, maybe you need to clean it down a little bit more. Some tips and tricks. If you're in class and you're cleaning your pole, that is definitely an opportunity to practice getting your sexy on. And if you work in a club, it is especially your job to still be cute while you're cleaning your pole. So I'm going to show you some examples of that. If you're staying low to the ground and you're not really climbing, then you can just wipe down the pole from about as high up as your arm is going to reach. If you are climbing, one thing that you can do is hook your spray bottle somewhere in your clothing where you think it won't fall, and then you can tuck your rag somewhere when you've got your hands and your legs free to climb, and then you can release it. Remember, Clean your pole to keep yourself from getting sick, and clean your pole so that you can stick. <laughs> I'm corny. <laughs> Another thing that you can use to clean are antibacterial wipes. Just make sure that they don't say moisturizing because if you put any type of moisturizing agents like lotions on your pole, you're going to slip. If you are a dancer and you have to bring your own towels to work because they might not supply them, I like black ones because <laughs> they won't show any type of dirt that you might be cleaning off the pole and I also suggest bring a few of them because once you wipe down the pole with this it's it's dirty it's got germs on it so you might want to swap that out for another one so if you have to have a few sets on the stage you might want to figure out how many times you're going to go up there and bring enough of those for each time you go up so you know it's always fresh. Alternative things I've seen people use to clean their pole in a crunch hand sanitizer on their cloth and also vodka. Next episode. So this episode starts and of course they're still in the club and Gaia comes back and she's with security and all the girls basically think she's crazy. They don't know why she's there. And then they start debating on, well, can she even dance? Because if she can't dance, then she definitely doesn't need to be here and we don't need to discuss it. So they let her dance and she does some pole tricks. She's really cute. She has a nice body. She's elegant. She looked good on the pole. The other girls were kind of saying, all right, she has some tricks, but so what? And Kay Capri got up there and she danced and they said that she did better. But honestly, for a show about dancing, they don't show us the full thing. Like we don't get to see like the dance full out. So we can't really judge who did better than who. In my opinion, 
So, I mean, it looked like Kate Capri just got up there and did some tricks too. So I, but once she gets off the stage, all the girls basically shame her because she had a lot of hair that was coming out of her G-string and just showing. And they would call her Wolverine Puss. And, <laughs> and just saying like, why do you look like that? And who told you that was sexy? Things like that. And the thing is, I think they're just being haters because not everybody needs to look the same. They have this mob mentality where they're like, everybody needs to fit in. And don't get me wrong, the girl is definitely like out there. But to say everybody needs to look the same, no. And that'll be the thing that would get her actually probably paid in a club because seeing a little bit of hair is something that's like, you're not really supposed to see. And it's kind of different since most people get shaved. So you're seeing a little bit of something extra, which is gonna make people think even more sexual thoughts, which will probably make them spend a little bit more. And the other girls aren't really thinking about it like that. But I'm sure she's never had a problem getting paid with the Wolverine Plus, so. So after the girls kind of beat up on her a little bit, she leaves and she's ready to go. And then Amber, I'm so sick of that girl, looking for a moment, goes to chase her. And she's aggressively being supportive and telling her that she needs to say. And, and Guy is like, mm. she might be a little nutty, but she's like, it was real aggressive and it was weird. And she wasn't going for it. And she said, listen, I'd rather leave than deal with this. So... She goes back with Jocelyn and, and Jocelyn tells them, all right, well, you know, y'all didn't dance now, but later on I'm going to pick four girls and they're going to start the cabaret with me. So then they all leave and in the van home, Wet Wet is just on K Capri's nerves. And that's so crazy to me because before, wasn't she the one that was like, they're arguing over nothing when it was Amber and, and Wet Wet arguing. And now she's essentially mad over the same thing. In the house, Amber is talking to Henny and Amber is saying how she has a catering business and she wants to cook for all the girls. I'm like, oh, okay, so you're here to promote your business. You're not really here to dance, but we'll get back to that. So then Chanel comes outside and she joins Kay Capri and Black Diamond and Jordan. And they're just talking about what happened at the club and about the cleaning situation. And they say they felt some type of way, but whatever. So in the midst of that conversation, you cut to Chanel and her little confessional, and she's saying, why am I even competing? I won last year, I thought that was the whole point, which I agree with. Her and Lexi shouldn't have to compete this season. It should be them, they should be dancing, they should be leading the groups, maybe having, you know, like, supervising the girls. But in terms of like, proving myself all over again, for what, I already did that. And it's not like the girls there are like, drastically more amazing than Chanel, so it's like, Respect her title. Jocelyn not even putting respect on her name. So how are the other girls supposed to respect her? So inside you have Lexi Blow, Raven, Lollipop, Amber. And they're practicing on the pole. I think Hennessy was there too. And basically, this is when Amber starts letting you know she can't really dance. She's like, oh, why y'all like practicing, trying to go in the beginning of the end? You know, some of us don't know how to dance. And I'm like, here we go. She's another Barbie. That's what this is. I'm like... Wet Wet is yummy and she is Barbie. She's running her mouth and starting all these problems because she cannot dance. But then Jocelyn comes down and Jocelyn is like, it's only four or five of y'all down here practicing. These girls aren't taking it seriously. And Chanel joins them and then she and Amber start talking. And Amber is saying how she doesn't think that Chanel is strong and leading them. And Chanel's like, you're the only one that's questioning my authority, though. You're the literally um, the only person that's giving me problems. And she's like, well, I'm the only one challenging you. And then here goes Lexi Blow backing her up. Oh, well, maybe it's some of the way you were dictating the orders when they were cleaning, and that's why they feel some type of way. And again, Jocelyn doesn't have a problem with Lexi Blow not standing up for Chanel, but it's a problem if Chanel doesn't stand up for her. Have her back. Weren't you just saying last episode that y'all need to be on the same accord? And then the first chance you get, you throw her under the bus girl <sighs> and then of course the only other person that says something about Chanel was Hennessy Hennessy and Amber the only two that feel some type of way and they're the only ones who cannot dance aside from that Jocelyn's body looked good in this scene finally we are at the club so you know this is what I'm looking forward to right because I've been waiting for dancing ever since this season started so at the club jocelyn tells them that they're gonna go three at a time she's gonna watch them dance to narrow it down so the first three are k capri black diamond and raven 
and they're dancing and Jocelyn thought all three of them were weak. For all the mouth K Capri had, she thought all three of them were weak. But Raven and Black Diamond, especially, they just the booty jigglers. They don't know how to do any pole tricks. They don't do any, they just stand there and jiggle and shake with big fake butts. And it's like, and Jocelyn wasn't impressed. All right. And Amber said they got up there and danced like hoes. Y'all are opening a strip club. And they got up there and danced like strippers. And you're calling them hoes. Like, what? Girl, what are you talking about? Just stop hating. You can't do that either. And that's why you're mad. So next up was Chanel, Henny, Riri, and Wet Wet. And Hennessy, Lord, even Black Diamond was like, what does she do? What does she even do in a club? Because she's not a dancer. Is she a prostitute? Like, what's happening? Because on the stage, it was atrocious. And Wet Wet was not good in terms of dancing either. Chanel was doing her thing. Riri did her thing. Fine. So last up was Lexi Blow, Amber, Jordan, and Lollipop. And they all did good except for Amber. Amber was trying to twerk off beat and it was just looking real weird. But collectively their group did the best. And you could tell that. Lollipop, I was surprised with. I liked her. It was very sensual. It was like a good mix of, you know, some cute tricks and sensuality. So that was nice. And you know Lexi Blow could dance. She was cute. So... That was good. Jocelyn's like, all right, I'm going to narrow it down. If you didn't get this round, go in the back. So <laughs> she keeps six people. She keeps Chanel. She keeps Lexi Blow. She keeps Riri. She keeps Jordan. She keeps Lollipop and Amber. So everybody else has to go in the back. And Kay Capri is in her feelings because she didn't get chosen. And so she's going at wet, wet. Big surprise. For round two, all the girls went one by one. And when Chanel went, you know, Jocelyn kept saying how she was disappointed. She was the winner last season. She was supposed to come out with a feather boa or something, just like with all the dramatics. And I'm like, well, you didn't tell her that. And two, you act like she won that much money. She got $10,000 after taxes and buying a couple of things. Like, how far does ten thousand dollars really go after taxes? Not very far. So Jocelyn saying she should be doing this, she should be doing that. Jocelyn should have taken the time in between to mold Chanel into being a representative for this new season. Her and Lexi Blow, and she didn't do that. And when Amber dances, Little Miss, oh these two are dancing like hoes, takes her panties off because she can't do anything else as like a way of winning. And Jocelyn is impressed by this, but it's like. Two seconds ago, you were saying somebody else was dancing like a hoe, but they didn't take all their clothes off. But you took your panties off and threw them in Jocelyn's face, and that that's not being that's not dancing like a hoe. Make it make sense for me, but whatever. So after all the ladies go one by one, Jocelyn is like, "Oh, we have somebody else who wants to come in and dance, and who is it? It's Gaia." So Gaia comes in with like a robe on and very like ethereal I'm about to burn some incense and meditate type robe with a little bit of um Florida water <laughs> and the girls are like here she goes again with this contradicting stuff and you know she's not making it easy on herself but I'm gonna come back to it so she comes out and she she's like again exposing herself like she, Jocelyn's like I don't know if I should let you dance she's basically pushing her panties to the side showing off all her stuff I'm like Zeus is showing a lot this season so Jocelyn just lets her dance and you know she's very sensual she's a very pretty girl she has a nice body so she does her thing and Jocelyn has probably the only real moment conversation she's had thus far and she sits her down she's like look in terms of like a physical package in terms of ability you have it the problem is your baggage and I don't know if it's gonna work for the cabaret and then she's telling her you know her religious stuff she doesn't know how it's gonna work for the cabaret and I get that, but at the same time, I feel like Jocelyn is one to talk. And <laughs> Guy makes it hard on herself because she's like, well, you know, God likes nudity, God likes sex, God likes all this. And the girls don't agree with her. But this is how I look at it. Jocelyn was off the handles from the time we met her on reality TV, just being crazy and doing the most. And that type of environment is one where like people who are a little bit different can kind of 
find their way because you're an independent contractor. As long as she's not in there hurting anybody or turning customers away, I would let her do her thing because honestly, her cabaret is giving me burlesque and stripper and burlesque dancers always have a shtick. If her thing is religion, I would let her come out there and whatever religious thing she wants to do, just like how she just did and do her show and all the people that have hangups over religion, all the people that are religious freak, whatever, they're going to gravitate toward her and that's a more of a selling thing. You might need to have an extra girl hired for when she's not there because I feel like she's going to be a flaky employee and you might have to sub her out sometimes, but I don't think her religious views are reason enough to cast her out because she's just as crazy as the other girls and she's less problematic she's not really starting too much stuff <laughs> with people so i say let her rock and until she does something super super crazy then i would kick her out but i think other people i.e amber should have been kicked out and <laughs> guys shouldn't really be a thing but that's my personal opinion of course all the girls pick on gaia again and so she leaves and then jocelyn does her deliberation so jocelyn picks four girls and then she decides that she's going to pick a fifth girl. And by the time she's picking the fifth girl, there's only Chanel and Amber left. And she picks Amber. Jocelyn picked Amber over Chanel. Amber who cannot dance. Amber who has been starting fights. And it's just amazing. Chanel takes it, you know, gracefully. She's like, that's all right. I'll prove myself another day. It's fine. And she goes to sit down and then Kay Capri and Amber get into it. And then we see the next week they get into a fight. Kay Capri and her big self with wet wet and her little little self makes no type of sense. But that's what we have next week. Tutorial for this episode by itself. Since there are so many girls there that really don't know how to dance, I'm going to leave you a link to another one that I did for last season for people that have absolutely no clue of what to do on a pole. Some things that anybody can do on a pole that's not just standing there and jiggling. So check that episode out. I'll be back next week. Hopefully we'll get some more dancing. <sighs> Hit me up on my socials. Um, write something down below if you feel like it. And I'll see you for the next one.